Action fam. We are back together for another sermon series called Say Yes. We've had this time where we've encountered God, but now it's time to get moving. So what is it that you need to say yes to today? Is it starting a C group? Is it joining a C group? Is it starting your ministry? Or just saying yes to that dream that God's put on your heart? No matter what it is, we just want to say we are for you, we are with you, and we're ready to get going. Now, you know what to do. Before we get going with our message, please make sure that you like, share, and comment this stream so that your friends around you have the opportunity to say yes as well. Come on, would you stand to your feet today? We're ready to worship with you. Come on, did you come ready to worship Jesus today?
it's so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it But you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it you take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle of you won. I am who you say I am. Crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who is conquered it all. And now I can finally see it, you're teaching me how to receive. Conquered it. 
you are my champion giants falling you stand undefeated every battle you won i am who you say i am you crown me with confidence i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated by the power of your name i am seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all
put our trust in you come on all across this room can you stretch your hands to heaven today father we put our trust in you oh God and we know that you could never fail us because you love us so much God worthy you are God worthy to be praised worthy to be praised worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah sing till my heart starts changing oh i'm gonna worship till i mean every word cause the way i feel and the fear i'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve I give you my worship, and you still deserve it. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of my song. I pour out your praises and blessing and break it. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy of my song. Praises 
and blessing and breaking. guys, it's Levi, your Outreach Director, and I wanted to tell you about an exciting event we have coming up. On October 31st, Compassion Church will be hosting a trunk or treat, and there are a few different ways you can get involved. First is volunteering. If you're interested in volunteering, please see us out in the lobby after service to get more information about our options. Second is candy, and we need a lot of it. We want each kid to have to drag their buckets back to the car with them, and incentivize candy donations, we're starting a little friendly competition amongst the directors. In the lobby, there will be boxes set up with each director's face on them, and whichever box is filled the most at the end of each Sunday, that director team must do a punishment, which will be streamed during service the following Sunday. So if there's that one director that you just can't stand, now is your opportunity. Lastly, guys, we just wanna make this as special as possible for the kids of our community, amen? So let's do this. Love you guys, and God bless.
Okay, Miss Avery, let's go through this light and turn right on the next street. <laughs> Ten and two, Miss Avery. <laughs> what are you doing? We just ran through a yellow light. I can't believe you just did that. My dad does that all the time. We're fine. Chill. I don't care how your dad drives, Miss Avery. We do not run yellow lights. Literally, whatever. Ten and two, Miss Avery. We are so thankful for the way that you give here at Compassion Church. From the money, to the way you serve, to the gifts that you use, they all play a part in furthering the kingdom. I promise you we couldn't do this without you, so thank you. As we're giving here, we just want to make it as easy as possible. So a couple ways that you can give are one. Go to CompassionChurch.cc slash give and you can give securely there online or you can text 84321. Make sure you text give and then select Compassion Church Wichita Falls. Jesus, we just thank you so much for what you're doing here at Compassion Church. I thank you that you are stirring up hearts of givers, not just givers of our finances, but givers of our gifts and our talents and our callings. God, I just thank you for rising that up within us. We pray that you will take this offering and you will stretch it farther than we could ever imagine. God, we just give it to you and we ask you to come in and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I, I had just been sad, I guess, and I, I needed something in my life to bring me back up. My addiction started uh, when I had come back from a trip from San Francisco. I decided to do meth, and that's really well it, where it all went downhill. I took two weeks for me to overdose and end up in hospital. Probably, um, I had been using for a year nonstop. And uh, it sort of led to a great depression, and uh, I had taken over a hundred uh, pills of Xanax, and that led me to uh, try to end my love life by jumping off a 50-foot bridge. Well, my dad, he was uh, into the church. He was a pastor back in California, and he sort of got connected with the churches here, and he found about hope, and that's how I got here. Hope Center has changed my life because I'm able to be with my family again. Uh, they don't have to worry about me. Uh, they can trust me and they just know that I'm working on my relationship with God and trusting Him every day. I would be dead. Um, that's that's it. I would be dead. I hope in Jesus Christ that uh, He's here for me, that He loves me, um, and that He kept me alive for a reason. So over the last few weeks, we've been talking about saying yes. We've talked about saying yes to, to your purpose. We've talk, talked about saying yes to your call. We've talked about saying yes to, to your commitment. And today, I'm ending this sermon series of say yes. But do me a favor. Don't, don't stop saying yes to God. Continue to say yes to God and yes to serving God. 
you know, I was kind of reflecting and I was thinking about, man, the, the last few years, probably like the last three years, it's been crazy. I mean, our world has just turned way upside down since COVID. Now, don't throw, I'm not, don't, we are not talking conspiracies or anything. It's just really went kind of strange since that all took place a few years ago. It's been a game changer for our world, to be honest with you. If you think about it, there was businesses that didn't make it. They closed down because of it. There was friendships that didn't make it because it was this or that or this or that, and we're not getting into that today. There was, there was um, increased fears. People started having fear that never had fear before out of nowhere. The trend propelled of not attending church anymore because of those fears, because of these items going on. It affected everything and everyone. It affected our sports. You think about that. Remember a few years ago? You could buy a cardboard stand of yourself and put in the stands. Who did that? If you did, I'm sorry, but oh my gosh, really? I was going to say something, but I'm not going to. But I'm just saying. I was thinking about this. I thought, what if we came to a place where things didn't actually get back, if we can call it normal, get back to a normalcy of life? Think about that. Think about our, our time Think about if they would have only had one person on the field. Think about that. It's Cowboys game today. He would have had to throw the ball, run out, catch the ball, then tackle himself and go set back up. Isn't that crazy? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's crazy of how things could have went. Matter of fact, we would have had to go back and change the name of teams all over again if they would have just kept, if we wouldn't have went back to some normalcy of having people together. The Cowboys would have been not Cowboys, but Cowboy. The Raiders wouldn't have been Raiders. They would have been a Raider. I mean, how scary is that? Oh, here comes the Raider. You just got to be faster than the slowest person, right? Because he can only catch one of you. Your Texas Rangers would have been a Ranger, which we're excited because we could outrun just one cop instead of multiple. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Wrong Rangers. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. But how weird is that? How weird would have life been that you would have went to a baseball game and he would have, he would have had to throw the ball, run up there, grab the bat, hit, the bat, hit it out there, run to outfield, catch it, then throw himself out at first base? How weird would that have been? I know these are ridiculous scenarios, and you're going, man, where is he going? Where is he at? But that's how ridiculous things are. But what it shows you is you need people and people need you. You can't do it by yourself. If you were in the military, you went to battle by yourself, as good as you are, you would lose. Because it takes a group of people. See, it takes different people working together with their different skills and their different talents, with their different giftings that's inside of them. It takes a complete team to make a community. It takes a complete team to be a body of Christ. It takes you to be the body of Christ. And in today, in Acts verse two, verse, uh, chapter 2, verses 44 through 47, it says, all, these, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to one, anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. 1 Peter 4 says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should speak at, so as one speaks who speaks with the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever. Amen. There is unity. There is community in unity. There is community in unity. There is unity in community. Father, I pray right now over your words. I pray that you would just lead us and guide us and have us open our hearts up and that we would, we would receive your word and we would walk out of here different. We would not be the same. Father, I pray right now. Let us give you, have your words give us life today. In Jesus' name, amen.
So in Acts, uh, Acts 1, Jesus had passed, had already been crucified, he had been resurrected, and then we enter into Acts 1, and, and when he got there, he showed up to his disciples, and those people that he had chosen, he had showed up to them, and he taught them, and he gave them instructions, and, and he remained there with them for a time, and he told them, I want you to go to Jerusalem, and go to Jerusalem. So Acts 1 and 8 says this, it says, but you will receive power, everybody say power. Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, on you, and you will be my witnesses. So then Jesus was taken up to heaven, and at that point, those 120 that were following him, then they made their way to Jerusalem because that's what Jesus told them to do. And then we enter into Acts chapter two, and it's well Acts chapter one verse fourteen. As they go back, it says this: They all joined together constantly in prayer. Do you hear? It wasn't just one of them. They all joined together, together and constantly in prayer. Then we enter into Acts 2, and it says they were all together in one place. See, there is something about what happens when we all get together. There's a unity that happens inside of there. There is something about being in a community of believers that brings the power of the Holy Spirit into our lives. See, the devil, he desires, his desires is for you not to be part of a community. He desires to keep you isolated. He desires to put fear inside of you. That is his job. That's what he's supposed to be doing. But when we come together, and he doesn't want you to come together because he knows that we're powerful when we come together. See, the years of these last few years, it hasn't really been the epidemic. It hasn't been it. It's been the fear and the isolation that has affected us. See, the devil knows if he can isolate you from a body of believers, which I know you say, why are you preaching this to me today? Because you need this, and so somebody else that's not here with you needs this. So take this just not for you. Take it for somebody else. You need to tell them, and you need to share, and you need to remind yourself, I've got to be in the house of God because we are better and stronger together. We are more powerful. But the devil, what he does, he's a roaring lion. He knows if he, can get you, if he can get you by yourself, then you become vulnerable to his attacks. Because I don't know about you, but the devil can mess with my mind really bad sometimes. You ever had thoughts in your head? Well, if you haven't, I had plenty for all of us. All those voices talk at one time. But sometimes it's the devil who's just trying to plant seeds and trying to say things and trying to get you to be vulnerable. He's trying to get you ready for the attack. Have you ever watched these TV shows of, of like people out on a safari? They're in a safari, and they got their cameras, and they're out, and there's the lion crouching in the brush. And there, I have horrible accents, so I'm not even going to try. And so they're, they're watching it, and, and there's a group of wildebeest there, right? And one of them gets separated, and then the lion comes up, and he jumps on them and attacks them. You know, one of the wildebeest moms going like, I told you if you just listen to me and stay with the group. But anyway, but that's what the devil does to us. That's what the devil does to us. He wants to get us isolated. He wants to interfere. He wants us to think that we're better by ourselves. He wants us to think that we don't matter. And then he begins to attack us. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Many times when we see someone doing something alone, it results Many times in sin, then falling into sin or falling into anxiousness or falling into depression or falling into fear or falling into isolation, and that is not God. Because you and I, from the very beginning of time, God looked down and he said, I don't want y'all to be alone. When he, created, when he created Adam, he said, he's not good for him to be alone. I need Eve. And then he told them both, go multiply because there needs to be a group of people. There needs to be a community. Jesus himself came down from heaven, and what did he do? He picked out 12 men and walked with them. He wasn't alone. Then he had 72 and sent them out two by two to go spread the news. They weren't alone. Then he had 120, and they weren't alone. We can't be alone. We've got to do this together because there's unity and power in our community of believers. See, while your relationship with Jesus is personal, it was never meant to be lived privately. It's always about living it out in community together. We're meant to be with one another because we're meant to encourage one another. We're meant to carry one another's burdens. We're meant to help lift somebody up, one another up. If I fell right now, some of you could lift me, but more than likely it would take several of you to lift me. <laughs> and then probably somebody to lift y'all. But I'm just saying because it takes all of us, it takes a group of us together, that we pick one another up. 
So over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about saying yes to community and what happens when we say yes to community. And when I talk about community, I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about the body of believers. So that's what we're going to talk about in the next few minutes. So the number one is this. There's unity in serving. Acts 2, 44 says all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Some of you have already dismissed the scripture. They go, like, I got a job. Do you think they just didn't work? If they didn't, then how did they sell their possessions and give to others? See, sometimes we, we take a step away and don't take the Bible and, and make it real because it was real. But they understood what they needed to do. See, the believers were together in everything in common. There was an amazing thing that happened. There's an amazing thing that happens in our church when we get together and we have everything in common. There's unity that happens. And see, what happens in here, and you can look at the scripture and you can see what happens. Selfishness was gone. They put others before themselves. Needs were met. Nobody had any needs whatsoever. Their needs were met. Maturity happens when you keep meeting in the body of Christ. Maturity happens because they, because they met together and they learned and they were trained and they got filled up with the word. And that's what you come to do. They had community. They hung out with one another. They did things with one another. Not a shameful plug, but we have a thing here. It's called C Groups. And it's a community of people doing life together to hold one another up. Join one. Get a part of one. Lead one. Then we can look at that scripture and we see that life, life happened. And what does it say? It says they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. They were happy. And they were sincere to be around one another. They were glad to meet. They couldn't wait to meet. I don't know about you, and I don't want you to raise your hand because I don't want to put nobody in spot or shame anybody. But did you get up this morning going, oh, i got to go to church and do my time card? Or did you get up and say, I get to go to church and worship the King of Kings, and I, I get to be a part of a believers? Which one did you do today? See, John 13, 35 says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We can't serve God and be selfish. We can't serve God and not love each other. We can't serve God and not forgive one another. We can't serve God in disunity. You know, the Bible says God, there are six things God hates, and the seventh is an abomination to him, and that is discord and disunity. This is how people in the world know that you're his followers. See, we have to live our lives that demonstrate the love of Jesus to all the people in this world that seem like they hate him. You can run around with all the Christian t-shirts, but if you've got a nasty attitude, what does that do? Mm, I'm going to turn you off. It's in my actions. It's how I present it. It's the smile in my face because my insides are changed. I know because I trust in him. See, the Holy Spirit doesn't just come to give us a good service, but he comes to make us good servants. That's what we're called to do. The second thing is this, saying yes to the community. Number two is power in worshiping. Verse 47 says, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. In our worship, we demonstrate power in unity. See, do this for me. Do this, do this. Everybody do this. Get ready. Go. Come on, let's do it again. See, every day we take a breath in, we let one out. That is a sign of life. You quit breathing, you ain't living. So when it comes to worship, we inhale together and we sing words that are on the screen. We sing them out together and we exhale, to, exhale together, which creates a unity and unity together, which creates a place for miracles to happen in this house. 
See, I, I have seen it before. I have seen it before in my own testimony. I've seen where a group of people were worshiping the King of Kings, and his Holy Spirit came in the house, and people started putting their drugs up here, putting their tobacco up here. They started laying money on these altars because they said, it's time for me to start giving. Their hearts were changed. I remember a time when somebody was, we were praising the Lord, and this lady started screaming, and we were like, what in the world's happening? Security, get her, get her, get her, because we were scared, right? We didn't know what was going on. But what happened is she was deaf in the ear, and she started hearing again during worship. That's what happens when our worship happens. That's what happens when we breathe in and we breathe out. That's what happens when we sing a song. The worship power comes inside of us because we're worshiping the King of Kings. And he looks down and says, oh, that's my kids worshiping me. Let me give them an ear. What this is not, for anyone who was wondering, this is not the Jesus show up here. This is not your favorite TV reality show. We're serving King of King and the Lord of Lords. This isn't next episode of what is the praise and worship going to do today. You don't come and just watch. you got to come worship the King of King. If you trust him and he's done something in your life, then you're going to come and worship him. See, your worship exalts God and creates a community of believers in unity that enjoy the favor of all the people. I enjoy your work. You know what brings tears? Sometimes I get teared up because it will be a place where I can't hear any of the singers up here singing, but I hear the whole congregation singing. I can only imagine me being an individual, how that sounds, and it brings tears to my eyes because it moves my spirit and it moves my heart. Just think what your songs do to the Father in heaven. When we worship together, chains are broken. That's how powerful your worship is. I remember a story in the Bible about a guy named Paul and Silas, and they were chained up, and they were, inside of a, they were inside of a prison, and they began singing his praises. And what happened? The power of the Lord came, and it shook up the place, and chains were broken off. Prisoners were set free, and people were saved. That's what happens when we walk in unity together, worshiping the Lord. See, our worship in unity is the preparation and equipping for our fight with the devil. Each and every day. For us to be prepared to share the good news, you come in and worship and you get empowered inside of this place to walk back out there and face the devil. See, Ephesians chapter 6 says, our, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rule, the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. See, this is an army getting ready for battle. We're getting ready for battle against the schemes of the enemy. We're getting it ready for battle when we come in here and we're in unity together to win your families. We're here to work, win your co-workers. We're here to win this community. See, the enemy isn't playing games. He's playing for keeps. And some of us got to quit playing games. So many of us, were fighting for souls. Instead of fighting for souls in the spirit we're fighting people in their personalities in the flesh. We got to start walking in the spirit and understanding hell is real. This is only temporary. If you haven't been told today, let me tell you. This is basically a hotel you just written day to day. Your home's in heaven and it's being built for you. If you're a follower of Jesus. Saying yes to the community, advancing, it's advancing the kingdom. It advances the kingdom. When you say yes to community, when you say yes to unity, and it says in Acts 2, 47, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When we say yes to a community, the kingdom advances. See, there's a, in Matthew chapter 25, there's a master who went away. And when he got ready to go away, he gave one of his servants five bags of gold. He gave another servant a two bags of gold. And he gave another one one bag of gold. And when the master went away, when he came back, the one with five went back and doubled. The one with two went and doubled. And this is what Jesus, this is what the, the master said to the servants that went and doubled Instead of hiding them like the one did. He said this, Matthew 25, 23, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. See, the Lord identifies that he can trust you. And he sees that you'll be a good steward with the people coming in. You'll be a good steward with the gift that he's given you. It takes a community. It takes a church, a body of believers. The body of Christ is what you are to reach the lost. 
But what we have to realize is we are not just called to pull people out of heaven. That is the, out of hell, that is the starting place. We are now called to make them disciples. That furthers the kingdom. That is your call and my call. Number four, saying yes to the community is a purpose as believers. It gives us purpose as believers, saying yes to a body of Christ, saying yes to being part of a community, saying yes to serving. It gives you a purpose as believers. And 1 Peter 4 and 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as anyone who speaks the very words of God. If anyone who serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. You don't have to do it on your own. He's going to provide you strength so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. You heard, you've heard so many times from this stage that you have a gifting. You've heard so many times from this stage that God's placed a gift inside of you. You've heard so many times that we've, we've encouraged you to join a dream team. We've encouraged you to be part of a C group. And sometimes it sounds self-serving, and I understand that. But what we see right here in Scripture, he says you have a gift. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. We are given a gift in order to serve others and faithfully steward God's grace. Do you realize you're stewarding God's grace by loving people? Their failures, their, 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 all their bad that's inside of him, you're giving them grace because he gave you grace. You say, I don't know my gift. I don't have all my life together. Well, none of us do. We all messed up. And anybody who acts or says they got it together, they lying, so they really got it messed up. <laughs> They're not self-aware. <laughs> But we all do. It's all of us. But it does not make it, it doesn't make it true that you don't have a gift because you ain't got it together. He clearly says whatever gift you have received, there is no gift that is a minor gift. Whatever gift you have received is to be used to impact the body of Christ. Everybody in this room under the sound of my voice has a gift. Every one of you have a gift to serve, to steward God's grace. We have a couple of people in our church right at this right now, not the service, but we had a couple of people in our church that because someone used their gift as simple as being in the parking lot and carrying an umbrella while they were carrying their newborn in, that person, those people remained in this church for eight years because that impressed them and said, wow, if they care for my wife and my baby uh, and they walked in and now they both serve on a team here. Your gift, don't, there's not a minor gift. There's not a minor gift. But it takes the unity of our community, of a body of Christ right here, to help bring people in and say, here's a place for you. Bring your gift on. There's a lady in our church that she came in looking, looking for a church. She moved to this area looking for a church. She came in here, and back in the day, we used to do a big Easter egg hunt. She came in, and tables were here. We were throwing candy at one another and putting, eating some of it and putting some in the eggs. And she said, these are my people. We're like, hey, come on in. You're going to help us stuff eggs. She said, how many are we doing? We said, 40,000. Just come on in. Here's some more tape, right? We got it going. Because of that, she stayed with this church. She sings on the worship team, and she's part of the care pastors. Did she have it all together? I don't know, but she had a gift. And now her gift is making room in this church for others. We got a flip-flop wearing ponytail guy. Don't know if you ever saw him before. When he started joining and he got involved, he wasn't using all the correct language. You know what I mean? Not trying to call him out. But I'm just saying, he wasn't perfect. But they said, join the safety team. He said, I don't know. They said, come on. He did, and now he's one of our directors. There are so many more stories I could tell you, and if I didn't call your story out, don't be offended because we need to talk about unity, right? Don't get hurt over it. But listen, we've got stories. I could tell you so many more people that they just used the small gift they had, what we consider a small gift. I can tell you right now, there is people who walk to this church to get in a van because they don't have transportation to get here to get in a van to go pick up other people so they can come to church. There is no gift that is too small. 
Why do we keep making excuses? Are we with that person with that one talent and are we hiding it? He won't trust you with no more because he's going to take it from you. But you've been given a gift. Why not allow it to multiply? You say, man, if it multiplies, that's more responsibility. But you know what? You're doing it for the king of king and lord and lords. And guess what? When it multiplies, guess what happens? You're bringing more people with you, and that's multiplying. Because as, the, as they were getting saved, they were added to daily, which means the gospel keeps going daily. Your gift is not too small. Do not underestimate what your gift is. The question is, will you use that gift? I have story after story after story that I could tell you about people who joined in a team. And because they said yes, because they said, I'm joining in community, I'm joining a dream team, or I'm being a part of a C group, people's lives have been changed. Families' lives have been changed. Kids have come back to their mamas and daddies because Jesus changed their life by them just saying, yes, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to get there. First Peter 4 and 11 says, if anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. I, wanna, I want you to, I want to, we're not asking you, and I'm not asking you to pick up another responsibility. What I'm asking you to do today is determine what responsibility you need to lay down that's not important. See, sometimes in our life, we add so much busyness to our schedule that doesn't line up with the kingdom. We got to line up with the kingdom and say what is making internal, inter, inter, eternal differences. There is no gift that's too small. See, last week, we, we've been doing this for four, three weeks now. Last week, and, and as you sat down, you, you had these say yes cards. And I didn't preach this sermon in order to get you. I want you to say yes because I want you to identify in yourself that God's put something in me, and it's a gift, no matter how big or how small that gift is. I've got, whether it's calling a telephone, whether it's opening a door, whether it's doing something behind the scenes, nobody sees, but there's a gift inside of you. I just want that gift to come out of you. I want you to use that gift because you begin using that gift. It brings unity in this body. And when it brings unity in this body, we become a stronger community and we can fight off the devil. You don't need to be doing it by yourself. He didn't call you to. He didn't ask you to. That is a lie of the enemy. So we've been doing these cards for three weeks now. And, and I just want to tell you, I, two cards came across my desk this week. And I'm going to read these cards to you. I love to pray and help with prayer with others and kids like me. And I am very reliable and mature. Please use me, she's 12. <laughs> Babies love me and I love to pray for and with people. I'm 12, about to turn 13 and I want to make a difference. I ran, I can watch and take care of babies, and I love to pray to Jesus with and for people. Please consider me, even if I'm too young. These are babies who understood their purpose and the significance of saying yes to a community of believers. When, we, when are we, as adults, going to say yes and become willing to the power of saying yes to serve with the gift that you've been given? It's time to say yes to the community. It's time to say yes to serving. It's, it's time to say, it's time for you to go grab some other people and say, come on, go with me. If you're serving now, hey, I want you to come with me. That's what you, you go get them. They got a gift inside of them. And sometimes, you know, you, you got to help, you got to stir, stir it up a little bit for them. Because sometimes they don't believe in themselves. Help them believe in themselves and help them find their purpose and help them bring that gifting that's inside of them, bring it out. There's unity in serving. There's power in worship. It advances the kingdom, and it brings purpose to the believers if we'll just say yes. Maybe today you haven't made that decision this month to serve, and I, I'm just going to encourage you today. If today 
you say, you know what, it's time for me to use that gift inside of me. And maybe I didn't mention any gifts that are inside of you. You go, this is what I like to do. This is what I enjoy doing. Or, you Just come talk to us. We'll help you with that. Maybe we haven't started it. Maybe it's not part of it. But you know what? It can get there. We don't have it all together. We're still figuring it out. We're the body. The body keeps growing. But today, use this card right here. And I, I challenge you to use this card today. Fill this card out and turn it in up here. Take a step of faith or turn it into the next step desk. But I'm asking you today, use your gift. Use your gift. Use your gift. With every head bowed and every eye closed, one of the most poor important things to saying yes is saying yes to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And today, if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, it's so easy to... All we have to do is admit that we're a sinner and believe that Jesus is the Son of God and he died again and rose on the third day and confess him Lord of your life. If today you say, I want to say yes to Jesus, just lift your hand. I want to pray with you. If there's anybody here that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus today, is there anybody? I see one hand. Is there anyone else that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus? Two hands. Is there anybody else? I see three hands. Is there anyone else that says, I want to give my heart to Jesus today? I see four hands. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus today. We are a family here. You're a part of a community now. Actually, there was five, and there's a part of a community here, and we're a family. And so we all pray this together. So let's pray together. The ones who gave your, given your heart to Jesus, we're going to pray with you. Pray, dear Jesus, I invite you into my heart and to my life. Please forgive me of all my sins and all my ways. I repent, and I ask you to be the Lord and Savior of my life forever. In Jesus' name, put your hands together for Jesus. We are so happy that you joined us today. Here at Compassion, we value family, which means we value you. If there's any way that we can be praying for you and believing with you for something, please make sure that you let us know. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you here next Sunday.